In this presentation, we're going to see how to use replenishment system and reordering policy for Microsoft Dynamics NAV. So we'll go through the replenishment systems available, the options for a reordering policy, and we end up by doing a quick preview on the other parameters that we'll cover in another presentation. So let's go to the requisition worksheet in the purchase planning and we have prepared an item to reorder for different locations. So they so far they all purchase from two suppliers. When we go to the stock keeping unit card, replenishment system is set to purchase. So if we go to the red stock keeping unit, purchase with another supplier. Okay, now let's change that and we're saying that the red location is going to receive from the location blue. And we'll do the same. The on location green we don't receive that from the supplier but from location blue as well. So we're going to recalculate the plan. And now we see our green location is going to receive a transfer order the so red also and we have the blue that covers the two transfer orders so 30 plus 15 45 now we can change that and let's say that the red location is going to receive that from the green so we are in a hub and spoke model so green receive from blue and red receive from green. We see the red location 15 and the green location receives 30 for itself and 15 for green. Blue location receives the 15 and the 30 for for green and red and 150 for itself. So we could have transfer, purchase and uh, transfers from different locations in Cascade. Now the other models, the other uh, replenishments available are assembly and production which are pretty similar. So let's do an example for uh, with that. Here this ID stock keeping unit for location blue is set as assembly and we're going to calculate the plan so for location blue on this item and here nothing uh, happens in the requisition worksheet because to take into account assembly and production you need to go to the planning worksheet pretty similar to the requisition but it takes into account assembly and production so let's do exactly the same from the planning worksheet and now we have the plan so 15 to reorder for that item. So let's, if we go to the item card, we can see the assembly bill of material that needs two different, two other products to assemble it. So still on the planning worksheet, what if we reorder the finished good and the uh, components needed to assemble.
So the system is going is creating an assembly for the finished goods and the components that need to be purchased. So when we use assembly or production on the replenishment system, there is another parameter to take into account. So replenishment system So not on this one. Okay, and the finished goods, so production order or assembly, you need to look at the manufacturing policy or assembly policy that could be make to stock, assembly to stock, or make to order, assembly to order. And the so there are some difference. On the make to order, you just make a production order for one item and it is mostly used with fixed and maximum whereas on the make to order you have an automatic reservation and usually it's used with order and lot for lot policy let's look now at the fixed order quantity the reordering policies so first we'll start with a fixed order quantity. So we've created an, uh, an item with a stock keeping unit at location blue that is set to fixed order. We enter reorder point and reorder quantity. So far we had nothing on the on order. Now we've put something. We've put 40 on purchase order and we've put 100 on the sales order we look at the shipment date as well when it and 25 on inventory so we've got 65 that uh, that is going to come and so the system suggests to order 140 Okay, 140. So we're using mainly the reorder point to do that. Uh, it's possible to use a safety stock. I would, uh, I would not recommend it. Let's see what it does. So it's pretty much acting in the same way, reorder point or safety stock, just more lines are created because NAV will try from the 25 in inventory to cover the uh, safety stock first. So 100 minus 25 does created 75. So you could, let's put now a safety stock and reorder point. So it tries and we, so 80 of safety stock. So 80 of safety stock and we add 25 in inventory. So it's creating the second line, 55 to go to the, uh, uh, to go to the safety stock and in the end it's, we're getting to the same result so I would not recommend using it but it's still possible now let's look at the reordering policy of maximum quantity so we've created also an item with maximum quantity Here it uh, suggests 175. Let's see why. So we need real order point 100, 200 in maximum inventory. And inventory is 
25, but we already have a quantity on purchase order 40. So it's a bit strange that we've got 65 and it's, uh, so it, it looks like it's not taking into account the purchase quantity. So let, now let's put a time bucket. It's because now I've tried to go to uh, 200 right maximum right now. It didn't take into account the purchase coming. But now with a time bucket, we can see that it takes into account the purchase orders. Now we've put a sales order in for 100. And if we recalculate, we can see the 135, 30, 35 as before, and 100 to cover the sales order. Now, in the same way, if we change our time bucket, if we extend it to 20 days, it could combine the two lines. So if we do it again, so with it, so okay, that's the total needed. So with the uh, maximum inventory, you would need to use a time bucket at the same time. Lot for lot now as reordering policy. So we've created an item and you can see that all the reorder point parameters are grayed out. So the lot for lot is meant to give you to reorder exactly what we need. So we exactly need the sales order minus the certified. So sales order minus inventory minus purchase orders. You could not take into account the inventory if you want, unless I can't really see any good reason for that. So, and we could use a safety stock in combination with a lot for lot. So let's redo it now. So exactly what we need for to cover the sales order plus the safety stock. So 40 So we need 25 to go to the safety stock. Now if we put a lot accumulation period, it's going to combine boss line. Okay, just one line created. Now the um, order reordering policy. So this one is, we see that all, everything is grayed out. And so if we look at the help, we have an automatic reservation created. So it's going to, not to take into account your purchase or inventory, but just to cover your sales with, by creating an order. So if we have 100 in sales order, it creates a 100 purchase order. In next session, we're going to, to go through time and dampeners parameters that we haven't covered, like the order of modifiers, we haven't covered that, and damp, so lead time calculation, dampeners, lot accumulation, time bucket, we'll see that in the next video.